Hi, I'm Kathy Thomas. A big welcome to Sergio Ortega, executive chef at Descanso in Costa Mesa. In this modern taqueria, he shows his mastery of classic central Mexican street-inspired dishes. Today, he shares tacos that showcase Descanso's made-in-house two-tone corn tortillas. Welcome, chef. And tell us about what kind of taco you're gonna make for us today. Today, we're gonna make a mushroom taco, which we call costras because we crisp the cheese at the flat top. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a nice selection of mushrooms and pretty classic with some salsa, cilantro on top, mushroom stews that my grandma used to make for us. And I just make a reinterpretation to turn it into a plancha oriented taco for this man. And I know it's delicious. Let's get started. Sure, let's do it. The fundamentals of pretty much all cooking, in my opinion, some onion and garlic we're gonna chop. And the white onion is traditional, isn't it? White onion is more traditional than any other onion. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is the one we consume the most for tacos, for stews, for anything. It tends to be white most of the times. And then I have like all kinds of domestic and farm mushrooms. This is uh, creminis, we got some little mushrooms, oyster mushrooms. You can pretty much pick anything you like. And there's not necessarily like the specific mushrooms I utilize for these things. So we're gonna throw a little bit of this chili just to give it a little bit of flavor. So my, my grandma used to say that as long as you fry the chili, it won't, it won't upset your stomach, so. Good point. Does everything here have to be done at the last minute? Or if you were entertaining at home, could you cook off these mushrooms in advance? Could you, you could cook it in advance and use them for something else as well. Um, we use some of these mixes as well for soups. Um, we make a, a, a different appetizer with bread that has this, this mix of mushrooms. It's pretty versatile. Tell us about this tortilla. The style of them is the one of the central plains in my home state. The ladies hand grind the corn and they have both uh, colors and they just scrape it and they do it like that. So this is just a little tribute to uh, the culinary heritage of so, my home state. Yeah, so you've got the blue corn here. Mm -hmm. And the yellow corn. Uh -huh. and, it, and it just is beautiful. I come from Central West Mexico and you see a lot of different colors mm -hmm. in the tortillas and the corn. Are you just softening the tortillas here or do you want to get a little crispness on them? I personally like a little bit of crisp. Mm -hmm. Some salt, some pepper, soften these guys. A little bit of thyme. We have this cheese blend, DOP, mm -hmm. so it's a genuine manchego from Spain. Mm -hmm. And we make Monterey Jack cheese and cotija cheese um, just to give it you know, different dimension and, and texture. You know, every cheese adds something different to the equation. The jacks, molten, you know, the cotija, the dry and salty, and the, the beautiful color we achieved from the manchego. One. It, Those are three delicious cheeses. <laughs> How could you go wrong? Right. We're gonna allow it to brown. It just adds more flavor to it, a little bit more complexity. And it adds to the texture, too. Yeah, the texture, mm -hmm. the, the appearance, you know, like brown mm -hmm. cheese, mm -hmm. who doesn't like that? Beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? It, it's pretty, pretty, pretty nice looking. And you're doing it on a kamal here, but could I do it in a skillet? You could do it in a skillet. Uh, Non-steak is preferred, but if you have a nice cast iron, it might work mm -hmm. as well. Um, I love cast irons. It's uh, one of those things that I hold dear to my heart. Temperature is uh, what you need to control. If it's too cold, there's no way it's gonna brown. So, but right. if it's too hot, it's gonna char. So right. a nice medium heat, and then we're just gonna add this mushroom mix. This salsa is um, it's not necessarily a recipe that my grandma used to do, but she oftentimes combined half tomatillos, half tomatoes. But we have some more cotija cheese as a garnish. Cilantro sprigs. And just some, some other herbs that you might find. Is that mint? This is mint. Sometimes, you know, we find some wild herbs, call them quelites in Mexico, you can use that. You can use epazote, which is pretty nice with mushrooms as well. That is beautiful, Chef. Thank I you. can hardly wait to dig in. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for sharing your secrets. My pleasure. Here's a quick tip from Melissa's. Usually I think of shishito peppers as restaurant bar snacks or appetizers. I love their grassy flavor, but I discovered that you don't have to deep fry them. At home, you can fry them in a small amount of oil and they blister beautifully. So you wanna start with a 12 inch deep skillet. Add about two tablespoons of vegetable oil, just enough to coat the bottom. So I'm gonna give this a good swirl. And I've got it on high heat, just 
high and then I'm gonna turn it down to medium high, but I wanted to get it to almost smoking. Okay, in go the shishito peppers and they're starting to sizzle. I can hear them. So we want to fry these until they're just nicely blistered on one side. It takes about three to five minutes and then we're gonna turn them over and cook them another two to five minutes. Okay, these look nicely blistered. Oh, and the smell is wonderful. So these are gonna go another couple of minutes. These look beautiful. Out they come. And now, some coarse salt and a good toss. And I never had to fire up the deep fryer. Delicious, grassy, a little spicy. Mmm. The produce aisles are filled with so many delicious choices. Try something new, have an adventure.